This is part two of a trilogy of videos. If you haven't watched the first video on how to make a CD jacket slash digipack, I recommend you to watch that one first before watching this one. Click on the screen to watch said video. Hello guys, I'm Jorge and this is our craft terrain training. And if you're new here, welcome. Let's get right into business. Start by going to the folder called CT Jacket Digipack that we downloaded in part one of this video. Open the folder called Templates. There, you should have a file called To Booklet. Open it on Photoshop. You see that the file has a guideline in the middle. It is very important that you leave it there. We will use it, but it will not appear when you print the design. First, the right will have the cover and the left will have the back cover. Save each piece as you go. I recommend you to label each page as one, two, three, and so on, depending on how many pages you will have. If you have an image on the middle and you're worried it will not look okay in the finished product, do not worry. We won't let that happen. Just design away. Once you have your designs, let's leave the computer for a little while and let's grab some scrap paper and a pencil or a pen. Remember I told you to label each image of your booklet from one, two, three, and so on? Well, depending on the number of the pages, you should divide that by two. For example, I have four pages, which divided by two, it gives me two. That means that I need two scrap pages of paper for this booklet. Let's fold both of the pages down the middle and put them on side of the other like so. With a pencil or a pen, we should start marking the pages with the number in order of the outer design. For example, the outside is one, so I make one left and one right depending on the side. And I repeat with a second page. I go two right, two left, and then the middle page is three left, three right, and so on and so on. Now, what we're going to do is separate the image like so and take notes of each page. For example, the one is one left and one right. If we flip the page, we have two left and four right in this one. And both of them, both pages should be paired. And the second one, I have four left and two right. And from the other side, the middle, I have three left and three right. It is very important that you take notice of the pages pair. For example, this one go on the back and the other one and so on and so on. Now that we did this, let's move back to the computer. Import all the booklet pages to the file we use at the beginning. With the help of the guide in the middle and the marquee tool, cut the image as new layers and label them one left, one right, and so on for each page. Now that we have divided them each, we need to put them back together in the order that we did in the pieces of paper. For example, my first page was one left and one right. So I put them together and I save them as A. The second page was two left and four right. So I put them together and save them as B. The third page was three left and three right. And I save them together as C. And the last one, it's four L and two R. And I save them together as D. Once all of the images are saved, joined together, let's open Microsoft Word and import all of our images. After that, we're going to size the image 12 centimeters height and 24 centimeters width. Double click each image and select on rotate objects and rotate 90 degrees to the left. Depending on how your printer works, you'll need to rotate the image on page two and four to the right. It's just a matter of trial and error. For example, this was my first trial and as you can see, it's flipped the opposite side. So next time, you'll need to rotate the image to the opposite side where you originally did and it worked okay. I recommend you to print a test booklet on black and white before continuing. After rotating it, we're going to click on positions and we're going to position each image on the middle center and we're going to print away. And make sure to select the option print on both sides. Once the pages are printed, we need to cut the extra paper. I'm using a clear acrylic ruler and an X-Acto knife. Some printers might print the design slightly off from the opposite side. This won't affect the final product so much. So I'm going to trim all the negative out. After both pages are cut, we need to fold it in half. One way is that you can simply grab the pages and mark the fold like so. Or what I like to do is if the design has an obvious seam down the middle, I like to use an empty ballpoint pen to mark the fold slightly. That's what I do. If you don't have an obvious seam, just measure the middle of the page, which is 
12 centimeters. So I'll score the page very lightly since this is paper and not cardstock and it doesn't need a whole lot of pressure. And the fold should be marked. Let's just press the fold down and I'll repeat the same thing on the other side. Now we're going to have a booklet coming to life. All that there is left to do is to staple it in place. Before we staple it, we need to mark a 2.5 centimeter down the middle of the cover from the bottom and the top like so. Now let's take our both pages and put them one on top of the other like so. This is it's optional, but I'm going to use two pieces of washi tape without a lot of glue to keep the pages together while I staple them. What I do, I take the booklet and line it perfectly and stick the washi tape to one of the pages and repeat on the opposite page. The good thing about washi tape is that it won't damage the image because it has a very light stick and that way it should keep it in place while we staple. Now, in order for us to staple the pages together, we're going to take a box. We take the booklet and put it on top, almost to the edge. We're going to take our stapler and open it as much as you can and we're going to staple where we mark the 2.5 centimeters after the mark and staple away and repeat on the opposite side. All that there is left to do is to lift the paper from the box very carefully. If you take a look in the middle, we realize that the staples did not flatten. That's what we want. We'll do it manually. With the bottom of my X-Acto knife, I'm going to flatten the staples down with a light firm press and repeat on the other staple. If you use the washi tape trick, all that there's left to do is to remove the tape very carefully. One last detail. Sometimes when we book bind, we might have pieces of pages sticking out like so. That's totally normal. Ask C Lemon. All we're going to do in order to keep everything as straight as possible, unlike me, I'm going to use my ruler and cut any excess sticking out of the booklet with my X-Acto knife. This can also depend on your printer. So not all printers will do this. And just like that, we have ourselves a booklet. Look at that. It looks very professional. We have it ready for a digipack or for your fan made CD. It's up to you. And that's basically it for this video. However, this week we don't get one or two, but three videos. If you haven't watched the previous video, which I showed you how to make a CD jacket slash CD pack, or if you want to learn how to make your very own CD label without using sticker paper, I'm going to leave the links at the end of the video as well as in the description of this video. If you only wanted to learn how to make a CD booklet, you have come to the end of the project. And that is it for today's video, guys. I hope you like it. If you like it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you are, thank you so much. You can follow me on my social media, Twitter and Instagram at Crafter Training. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye, yeah, yeah, guys. Click on the top to watch the tutorial on how to design and create a CD jacket. Click on the bottom to watch the tutorial on how to design and create a CD label without sticker paper.